Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. I hope this has been a blessed week for you all. I know it's warming up out there, so hopefully you've gotten a chance to enjoy some of this summer weather. Uh, but this evening, I wanted to talk to you all about Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 23. Uh, and in this chapter, Paul starts to break down things that he's praying for the believers to have as they walk out their faith uh, in Jesus, in Christ. Uh, and I think it's important for us to read and understand and also to apply uh, to our lives. And it's interesting because in this chapter, he starts off talking about how us as believers were blessed with every spiritual blessing uh, in the heavens in Christ. Uh, he talks about this, this wonderful blessings that we receive uh, as believers, as people of faith, as those in God's family. Uh, and he starts to explain this blessing. He talks about how we have been chosen to be adopted into God's family and how that in Christ we have redemption uh, by his blood and we have forgiveness of sins. Uh, he also talks about how we've received an inheritance uh, in Christ uh, and that also in Christ we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Uh, so he starts to break these things down, and then he talks about how, once he understood of, the, of their faith and knew about it, uh, he started to pray for some things for them, uh, things that they needed to apply and to have as they walk out this faith. And we're going to read uh, verses 17 through 23. This is what it says. It says, um, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what is the wealth of his glorious inheritance in the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the mighty working of his strength? He exercised this power in Christ by raising him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he subjected everything under his feet and appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. So he starts off saying, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. And what he starts to point to is that salvation is not the stopping point. Their faith is just the beginning of this journey. And there's some things that they need to, to apply and to add to, uh, to, to their walk. Um, and he, he really lays out that it's important for us to grow. That, that we, this thing is a, we're growing in our faith. It, this is something we're walking out. Uh, and he's saying that, I, that you need to grow. And I'm praying that God would give you some things uh, to help you to grow. Um, he says it's important for us to understand the gift that we've been given in Christ. And this wonderful thing that God has given us, right, through salvation, through faith in Jesus. It's important for us to understand fully what this gift is. Uh, and this understanding, he points to, comes from the Father. Uh, he talks about not that you go get this wisdom and revelation, but he says, I pray that the spirit of wisdom that God will give you, the glorious Father will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. And this idea of spirit is the idea of the spirit of man dwelt in and moved by the spirit of God. Uh, so God is working through and in us, all right, and he's producing uh, his wisdom uh, and the revelation of his knowledge. All right? And so when we think of wisdom, we think of right, applied knowledge. We think of not just head knowledge, understanding something, but being able to, to apply it to our lives, to use it uh, in meaningful ways. And when we think of revelation, we think of God's truth being continually revealed to us. And so Paul is saying that he prays that God would work in us uh, to produce wisdom, uh, applied knowledge, and revelation, uh, understanding of God's truth continually uh, in our lives. Uh, Paul wants us to understand the depths of what it means to be adopted into God's family and what it means to be sealed by God's Spirit. So he goes on to explain even more kind of the things that he's praying about. He talks about how he prays that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is uh, the hope of his calling. Uh, and when we talk about uh, the eyes of your heart being enlightened, he's talking about not just merely intellectual clearness, uh, but it's a moral aspect to this thing. He says this should be a movement of the heart as well as the head. Uh, we should be able to apply these things to our lives in a full way, uh, not just in, in, in just intellectual understanding. Uh, and he talks about this hope of his calling, that he says he wants us uh, to be enlightened so that we may know the hope of his calling. Uh, and this hope of his calling is the, is the glory which he invites us to look forward to uh, when Christ will come again. So we have this hope for the future, this hope of Christ coming again and walking uh, in the glory uh, of that future. Um, he goes on to say, what is the wealth? He wants us to understand what is the wealth of his glorious uh, inheritance in the saints. Uh, and this inheritance is uh, the inheritance of God that he gives us, which is unity with Christ uh, and this hope of glory again. So we, we inherit this, 
this unity with Christ and this hope of glory, uh, and that we are among the saints, meaning we are in the family of God. And because we're in this family, we have this inheritance. So this last part, it really sticks out to me that uh, that's the one that really uh, was speaking to my heart when he talks about he wants us to understand what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the mighty working of his strength. Uh, so Paul wants us to understand the power of God uh, that works within us. Uh, he refers to that back in, in verse 13 when he talks about how we were sealed uh, by God's spirit, that God's spirit is in us and is working in us. Uh, and so he breaks it down to help us understand that salvation is not just a work of understanding, but it is a, a work of spiritual transformation. Um, that verse says, in him we were also sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit when we heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation, and when we believed. So this idea that we believe, we heard the truth of the gospel, we believed, and God sealed us with his promised Holy Spirit. And now the Spirit is working in us, God's power is working in us. Uh, and God's power has been poured out on our, our weak and sinful nature, and it, and it brings life to it. It transforms it, and it purifies it, and it activates us for his service. Uh, so when we think of the glory of the inheritance uh, that we receive from God, sometimes we may feel unfit for it. However, our fear is removed when we think about the greatness of the divine power that works in us. God's power is working in us. And Paul says this is important for us to understand as believers. Uh, and so we might ask the question, well, how great is this power that is working in us? Well, he says that God exercised this power in verse 20 in Christ by raising him from the dead and seating him at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he subjected everything under his feet and appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is the body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Um, so this is the power of God. He said this power, the same power that, that raised Christ from the dead, that seated him at God's right hand, the same power that, that God used to do those things is working in us as God is transforming us, right, and purifying us and working in us uh, to make us useful for his ministry. So this is the power that moves us from death to life. Uh, this is the power that changes us from disobedient sinners to faithful saints. God's power is working in us. Uh, so I want to encourage you all this week, uh, Pastor Keith has been preaching greatly about uh, Joshua and being strong and courageous. I want to encourage you all to be strong and courageous this week, uh, understanding that we are children of God, we are sealed by His Spirit, and that God's power is working in us uh, every day. All right, let's pray. Uh, Father, Lord, we thank you, Father, for your goodness and your grace. We thank you uh, for your word and how it speaks to us, Father. And we thank you, Lord, that, that you are working in us, Father. Uh, Lord, and we pray that you would give us wisdom, you would give us knowledge and understanding of this wonderful hope that we have in you, Father, and that we would understand that your, your power is working in us, Father, and we pray that you would work in us to change us, to make us more like you, Lord, more like your son, Father, but also to use us for your glory, Lord, in all the ways you would have us uh, to, to move uh, and, and to do ministry, Father. Lord, so we thank you for all that you're doing. Uh, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you all. Have a blessed week.